trying to talk about some cultural things regarding gaming. And the um, main thing is uh, the game jam. Like you know, uh, game jams um, have gotten more popular uh, almost every month. There are online game jams, local game jams, um, and they have been for the last 10, 12 years. Um, every, every year there's more people um, doing them. And I want to ask you to join me in um, some thoughts about game jams. Um, I think uh, most of you here already know what it is, but... Um, Alright, what I'm going to talk about is well, something about them. What, what are they? Um, what they've grown, grown into? Uh, game gems weren't always like we're doing them now. Why we're doing them? Um, everybody's doing them is not a reason, so let's please think about why we're jamming. Um, taking a step back to do so. Um, I want to raise some questions. And uh, uh, basically the goal of this talk is to um, make game jams better, uh, more useful, and uh, basically more fun, actually, for everybody. So, um, what can I tell you about game jams, and uh, who the fuck am I? Um, I used to work at an organization called Dutch Game Garden in the Netherlands. I worked there from uh, 2008 till 2011. And Dutch Game Garden is an incubator for starting game companies from students to, to small companies to medium-sized companies. And um, with funds from Dutch government and European government, we house about uh, 30 to 40 small companies, studios, freelancers. Um, and I did a lot of events there. So I did some networking, uh, a lot of game jams, obviously. Uh, some facilitating, uh, there were office spaces there, and uh, people visited buildings, still do, but I don't work there anymore. Um, people from uh, politics, from business, from everywhere. So it's a really nice environment to, to be in, and a lot of uh, different people work there. Uh, some small studios you might know, um, Abbey Games, Flambeer, uh, Ronimo Games, anyway, lots of so, I organized the Global Game Jam in the Netherlands in 2009, 2010, and 2011. In 2012, I was a participant. <coughs> and we had uh, um, a lot of participants. Uh, it was uh, 140 in 2009, 2011. In 2010, we had, uh, I think it was 208 or something. A lot of people and a lot of organization. So. Um, we also did some jams on film festivals, animation festival, Dutch film festival. Um, we did some jams on uh, event properties um, with the Dutch broadcasting organizations, and uh, for yeah for external parties. So there were also some things about uh, uh, from health organizations and uh, whatnot. So, uh, I also jammed a bit, which has been the uh, last two years. I participated more and I wanted to make things myself, which has turned out a lot harder than I thought it would be. Like, it, it's, it's great to go in there and see all the teams jamming and, and making games, and uh, then commenting on what they could do better, and then when you start, you're like, oh god, I have to think about so many things. And, and so, I'm not a developer, but I jumped into it and I made this and this. And just with some people over here as well. This is something from last Sunday, <laughs> multiplayer game. Uh, well, it's basically none of these are none of these games is done. Let me be clear on that. Most of them are really crappy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one is playable. This one is playable. This one is a lot of fun. Okay. Um, this one you can move and there's voiceover. I'm, a, I'm a also a voiceover actor, so I wanted to do a voiceover for the game. So it's basically that. And the other ones are in. in oh, this one's playable too. Right. And uh, <coughs> yeah, in 2011, they asked me to draw the characters for the, for the Global Game Jam poster, and I drew those. <coughs> In true Game Jam style in Pittsburgh, it got picked up and they made it into t-shirts all over the world and some people made costumes, so that's what Game Jams do, like, gets people enthusiastic. Right? So, what is it, actually? For the people who don't know, uh, 
Is there anybody who likes to admit they don't know what a game jam is? Yeah? Okay, one, two, three, okay, some people. So, game jamming is uh, basically taking a ridiculously small amount of time, which was supposed to be your free time, because most of these people have jobs. It's the evenings, it's the weekends, um, to work with strangers with unknown skills, you don't know what they can do until you get there. On an experimental game prototype, mostly. There are exceptions, but this is the rule. But probably never gets released. At the end, of the now are simply broken. So you get all on that chair, and you also don't get paid for it. You don't get paid. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, Toby, yes, you don't get paid. No, you don't. But, but you get food. Oh, you get food. Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes there are sponsors, but they, it's not our thing. Most, most jams you don't. <laughs> Basically, it's not a good idea to do a game jam. But to be seriously, uh, to be serious, you, you join a few people who want to do the same thing in um, uh, making a game in, in just a few days, or even one day, or even uh, an hour. So, that's the thing. Um, and it's very popular, so everybody uh, around the world does it. Uh, Global Game Jam uh, this year, I don't know, 2012, we had more than 10,000 participants. I would guess that it's about <laughs> double this year. It's uh, uh, hundreds of locations around the world. We have some pictures here from uh, Dutch Game Jams where people take their clothes off. Uh, <laughs> so from uh, Nordic Game Jam, uh, <coughs> Mini Jam, I'm biased of course, because uh, I go to that. <laughs> Right. So, um, I have here a small history of game jams. It's uh, very incomplete, but it's more or less a picture of the bigger, more important jams and some, some biased <coughs> things that I like. Um, the real jamming uh, started in 2002 with Indie Game Jam, uh, which was a local jam in, uh, in uh, um, Florida, I think. And Ludum Dare, which is an <coughs> online game jam, so people didn't get together. And it was, it was really uh, developers um, coming together, working on one engine and making prototypes of that. Like, what can we do with this engine? Uh, in 2006, there was from uh, a university in um, Denmark and other Nordic, Nordic countries, it was the Nordic Game Jam, and Toe Jam is in Toronto. These are uh, organized by institutions, so uh, university schools. and. Um, basically asking students to make something in a really short amount of time. Then there was the Amnesia Fortnite, which is a totally different thing in itself. It, this was held at um, a studio called Double Fine, Double Fine Tim Schaefer. Uh, they were basically stuck uh, on um, Brutal Legend, and they said, well, fuck it, we're going to take uh, two weeks off, make whatever you want, and come back after that. And they've been releasing these uh, medium-sized games over the last few years, and it's turned out really great for them. Uh, no More Sweden, Gameland, which is a really cool one, it's on an island in the Netherlands. Uh, then 2009 Global Game Jam, which came from Nordic Game Jam. And uh, Nordic Game Jam now is its own thing again, but it used to be location for uh, the Global Game Jam in the Nordic countries. Then, uh, well, you can read for yourself, we have Berlin Mini Jam, Big Jams in Berlin. And then we started having some really specific jams, Fuck This Jam, where you build a game in a genre you, you, you really hate. <laughs> uh, Molly Jam, which is a jam based on the uh, ridiculous ideas of uh, Peter Molyneux, which is a parody of Peter Molyneux. Um, seven Day Roguelike, Seven Day First Person Shooter. Um, and there are some, some really interesting things happening. So people are really running with it. And uh, if you want to know where to jam at this moment, there's always one happening. Go to compohub.net. It's uh, basically a calendar for these things. So, um, there are also now these <laughs> activist uh, <laughs> online game jams. I, uh, some people might have heard of these. Uh, it's, it's actually new stories in the games industry which leads to um, people getting together and making, making games. Flappy Bird, this, this developer was harassed on the internet um, disregarding the quality of the game, but uh, he was uh, basically forced from his perspective to uh, remove the game 
and a lot of developers thought, oh, we, we really like this thing, it's this, this silly little simple game, we want to make something like it, and to support it. Uh, Candy Jam, which is a, a protest for the candy trademark by King, uh, the Candy Crush Saga people. I can't say that actually because I don't have the right. <laughs> um, but this is basically a big fuck you, we're going to make as, uh, as many games with the word candy in it as we can. So I, I really like this. This is, this is basically uh, game developers getting together, uh, um, putting their uh, uh, muscle together and uh, making a front, making a message. So, good things about Jams. You have the freedom of creation, you can do whatever you want, basically. You can meet new people, you get help on whatever you're working on. You can learn a lot, which is basically the thing I'm doing. Every every time I I, I I fall again and I stumble and I do things that don't work, but I learn as well. Experimentation, um, training your improv skills because you have to come up with something on the spot. Uh, it motivates you to work again if you have a boring job and you're a developer and you have to work on something you really don't like, but you get paid for it. And maybe this helps you get back into the group again. Um, it's good for your portfolio because you can get all these, these prototypes and put them on the website and everything. Uh, felling, it's really feeling, of course. But it's about felling connected as an industry. But um, I was talking with uh, Lorenzo as well and uh, with my good friend Soraida, who is the uh, executive <coughs> director of the uh, Global Game Jam now. Um, are we doing too many game jams? Some some questions that are raised, like not not just by us, but some by some people. Um, are too many people joining? Because uh, everybody can join basically, and, and sometimes you have people in your team, and you're, you you find out that they can't really do what you, you want them to do. Um, are we doing too little with the results? The game that the, the games we make at the end of the day, at the end of the weekend, uh, where do they go? Is is it wasted? Effort, basically. And uh, this is the most serious one, actually, um, that uh, I take the most seriously. Are we fostering a crunch time culture? Crunch time is um, the part of the work where the deadline is coming up and you have to work overtime and you have to work harder uh, and your boss says, boss says, no, you can't go home, you have to stay three more hours because the game is not done and we have a deadline. So um, this is basically something that's uh, sometimes glorified in the games industry. You work hard, you don't sleep, you drink all these energy drinks, you feel bad, but hey, uh, crunching, crunching, crunching. Uh, let's do it together and we're all cool. Um, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good thing to do. Let me do for that. I'm not a developer, but um, I can imagine that this, this wreaks havoc on your social life, on your body, on whatever. So, so let's take a step back. Um, what is a game jam like? It's like a game. Um, I wanted to show these one at a time, but of course, uh, let's do it like this. Um, it's basically like a game because you, you, we come together, we have a theme, we have a goal we want to make a game. We have a set time limit, whether it be a one day or uh, 48 hours or whatever. And we can, uh, we can basically set the rules and we can make our own rules. <coughs> so jamming is like playing a game, um, which could mean that organizing a game jam would be game design. How are you going to play this game? How are you going to participate, all of us? And what are the rules? But um, are we gaming or are we playing? Is it, uh, a game is something uh, more rule-bound than, than, uh, than play, actually. The, 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 I'm not going into the, the semantics of it now really, really far, but uh, you understand the basic uh, principle. Gaming is um, more like getting a goal, <coughs> setting a goal and getting it, and um, um, having fun doing so, but you're really goal oriented Playing is more like being in the moment, being here, uh, having fun right now, and the outcome is uh, not so important. So jamming, if you get back to the concept, um, you can see it two different ways. You can see like in a <coughs> come make a game, you're doing an MC battle competition, 
it's, it's one against the other, and who's be, who's better right now? And you're you're improvising and you're coming up with lyrics on the spot and uh, basically dissing the other one. Uh, okay, that doesn't happen as much. Okay, but um, you get my point. It's a competition versus uh, a jam session, getting together, making music, improvising, uh, listening to what the other people are doing, and uh, responding to that. And together you're making music, and this is what you're doing. You're not making a song which is finished at the end or whatever. And I like to think it's more like this. And I would like to urge you to, to also look this way. And uh, you can also jam your finger and jam. But... <laughs> <laughs> this is about a mini jam. This is what it's about. <laughs> it's a pretty small amount of jam. Yes. <laughs> So this is um, uh, this is straight from Wikipedia, but it's interesting. A jam session is a musical event, process, or activity where musicians play. You can uh, you can put game developers here. It's the same thing. By improvising with uh, without extensive preparation or predefined arrangement. So you're just coming coming there. You have your tools. You have your things, and you're doing. It. So if we. Uh, I want to jam like uh, like Bob Marley is singing in a song like uh, and uh, I hope this jam is going to last you know <laughs> <laughs> I want to, want this to go on and I want don't don't want to to look at this this deadline and it's gonna be finished then oh it's like we're jamming <laughs> so um, some mistakes that got made and I want to uh, advise maybe not to do don't come to the jam with the team this is a rule from the global game jam and it gets uh, I know, at least in the Netherlands, people don't adhere to this rule at all. They come with, with preformed games all the time. They have pre-made assets, and I really don't like that. It's, it's not about it's not about scoring. It's about uh, seeing what you do there. Don't prepare. Just get your computer there. Get your music gear, whatever. Do it for fun. And uh, uh, I would say try to fail, maybe. Just uh, try something new. Try something you think maybe might work. You're not sure of? Just do it. Jamming is playing. Jamming is not playing a game, but it's just playing. Break the rules. Um, just make it. Just make sure it's fun. Just you know, uh, get some sleep. Welcome some changes and suggestions. It's also um, not a lot of people do that. Um, I see a lot of uh, teams just just keeping to themselves, not telling anyone about their uh, genius concept that they have, um, and uh, not socializing at all, which is basically the, the reason why you come to the gym, I would think. Um, well, this, is, this is obvious as well. Share ideas, don't worry about the quality, just have fun. Some lessons I learned. Don't disturb people in the first few hours. They really get annoyed. They're coming up with ideas. <laughs> And they don't want to be disturbed, just, just leave them alone. And then after, if it's 48 hour jam, just after six hours or so, start talking to them. How's it going? Is it going good? Are you talking to each other? You know, are you friends in this team? That's, that's fine. Don't disturb them in the last few hours. <laughs> this, this is crunch time. If there's a, there is a deadline of course. They want to finish as much as possible. So, minimize it. Uh, pointing roles in it. This is this is tips for jammers actually. So if you were in a jam, um, appoint some roles in the team. Make somebody the main game designer. Everybody wants to participate in something usually, but uh, if everybody wants to have their say, just make sure that somebody has the final say. It helps. Focus on one mechanic, and if you have time, maybe add another one. Not don't go all out. Just make it really good. Um, get playtesters in there as soon as possible. Get another team that's next to you and say, hey, play this game, and another time, and, and again, and again. Um, do some el something else for a while, go outside. This is all I have fun as well. Don't drink love and drinks, makes you stressed. It does, it does with me, not with everybody, but okay. Just a personal thing. Get some sleep, it will help. 
not on the pretty mini jam because it's so <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be the first two so it's a lie to the burden. Yes, that. Yeah. Not talking about the first four hours and not talking in the last yeah. four hours. You can last two hours down right after the first two. <laughs> Don't talk to people at the pretty mini jam. <laughs> Yeah, I used to wrote deodorants. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> deodorants was for uh, grown-up people. And um, you can disregard any or all of the lessons above. Just uh, learn your own lessons because it's all about it. So, um, just some final things. Um, it's a tweet from Sharida a few days ago. Um, is a theme inherent part of the game jam or are there different ways to experiment with the format? Just, just a thought. Uh, do we need a theme? Um, sometimes it's not a theme, sometimes it's a restriction. Make a game for Commodore 64, make a game, make a multiplayer game, which is not really a theme, but it's a, uh, it's a restriction, it's, a, it's something you're going to do. Maybe even the way we're going to form teams. Maybe, um, you know, there, there are different things that you uh, could accomplish in a game jam, and I would like to I would like to ask this question as well uh, to you. Uh, are there ways, uh, ways that, you, that you would like to get together and um, put up a new challenge for yourself? And of course, I will tweet it. It's a good tweet. Um, designing the games, jam. So um, if you're, if, if we're uh, going to make new jams, you're going to think about a few things like. What's the jam about? What do we need? What do we need? Basically, it's very basic. It's just uh, that's a secondary issue. But how many rules do we want? How many guidance do we want? Uh, do we? How do you want to connect people? Um, I've noticed that at a lot of game jams, people are quite introverted, or a lot of introverts there. So there should be something to get them out of their uh, cage or their safe uh, computer, uh, like behind the monitor. Everybody going like this and then programming or, or drawing or whatever and making it uh, through the jam that way. Um, and uh, this is, is the game jam a challenge. Now I think you already noticed which way I'm going with this. Who's the winner of the jam? If you can afford it, don't make anybody. Um, make sure everybody has fun, like we do a mini jam. I think it's a very good uh, thing. At the, at the Global Game Jam, and a lot of game jams I did in the Netherlands, I was working with sponsors, I was working with uh, an organization that paid me, and um, there was uh, publicity wanted, and they want to appoint winners, they want to um, give, give out prizes. So basically we were forced to um, select winners because we had sponsors. And um, if there's not a lot to show and everything's equal, then it's, it's not much of a story. So. We were kind of forced to, uh, forced to do it, but I would not recommend it if you can avoid it. It's just not um, good because you're going to get frustrated if you don't think your game is going to be good. Uh, comp competition means less freedom. You have to, to really uh, get to the, to the results, which causes inhibition, caution. You do safe things. You don't take any chances. and. Uh, um, I think it's better to highlight the unique qualities of each game. Like this, this is a really good game in this regard. This is a really good game because it uh, uh, incorporates video in an interesting way or whatever. So um, and I don't really think it's a jam if you uh, point to it. It's a competition. Then. Jamming is getting together and making games making fun. And, and uh, uh, Ludum Dare, the, the online game jam, has. Two, two parts, basically. It's this jam section where you can't win, and there's a combo section. And the combo section you have to do it in two days, it's more strict. The jam section, and you can take three days, so it's a bit more relaxed. <laughs> so it's also fun, but basically, because if you don't make a combo, and you, yeah, you just go for jam and take another day. I think actually you can win in jam too. Yeah? Yeah. It's just more relaxed, and you can have a team and everything, but they're still craving something. There's still ratings. Yeah. I, I can't miss that. Okay. Yeah. I think, actually. Yeah, there's, sure. there's yeah. still yeah. ratings for camps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I didn't know that. <coughs> so, um, basically, uh, to, to, uh, to wrap this up, um, there are different kinds of 
uh, kind of jams. We had, uh, there was a train jam where all the games had to fit together with the same control, same resolution, and uh, they all lasted, I think, a minute or something, half a minute. A minute, right? Chain jam. Chain. Chain jam. Chain jam. Train jam is another word. <laughs> 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 There is a train jam as well, but it's uh, something different. Uh, C64 again, jam, a uh, riddle jam, something I, I thought of uh, uh, some time ago. We, we could do a game jam where you can, uh, everybody gets a secret theme, and you have to guess in the, at the end what the theme was. And uh, whoever uh, has the most people guess it correctly wins. It's, uh, it's something to do. Um, we could reflect more than, uh, rather than improve what, what kind of prototypes we built, like what went good, what went wrong, what, we, what, can, we, uh, what can, we, can we use in this experiment. Invite more people. I think it's, it's nonsense to say uh, too many people are jamming. Everybody should jam. Like, everybody should try drawing once, or should try photography once, or should try um, whatever. Uh, just try it. And if you don't like it, don't do it. We have, so we need more jams. We can make some some mm -hmm. costumes to make it more fun, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I think we should loosen up uh, altogether. So I'm curious what you think. What is a triple X jam? Yeah, something I don't know. So thank you.